This is the Professional Stepdad, a place where we share stories, strategies, and ideas for men just like you to help answer that one important question, how can I be a better stepdad? All right, and we're live. Welcome back to the Professional Stepdad Podcast. I am your host, Franco Zavala. Thank you for joining me. A uh, real quick shout out to all the stepdads that have engaged and connected with me on this platform, that have shared the information, that are willing to in, uh, interact and be humbled within their own journey to share their struggles and their, and their obstacles that they're going through, not only with me, but by me sharing their stories publicly on YouTube and on iTunes and SoundCloud. Um, it's allowing uh, information to be presented to stepdads that will help them along their journey. You know, the stepdads are to come, that are going to come before us because I don't know about you, but there hasn't been a lot of information given to me or that I could find when it comes to the ups, downs, rigors, walls, barriers, you know, all the stuff that we have to deal with and go through as stepdads. Um, doesn't mean that there's not great information out there, right? I mean, I believe that there are a lot of different views and um, ways to look at this um, position that we are in life. I just choose to look at it kind of as uh, like in your face. This is how it is. This is how I see it. This is what I've been through. If this is your first time seeing the show, I recommend you go back and watch episode one only because it kind of gives a layout of what this show is about. But more importantly, it kind of gives a layout of who I am as a stepdad of 10 years Five kids, uh, four girls, one boy, teenage girls now going through that portion of my journey, which is the teenage girls, three of them in my family. And again, remember, I'm a stepdad to all five of them. Um, so it's been an interesting, especially an interesting quarantine ride, as like I like to refer to. So today I want to kind of touch base on one. I want to um, refer to a question that was on um, Facebook, and then I want to talk about the whole do as I say, not as I do. Well, let's actually go there first. So what do I mean by this? There are plenty. And when I say plenty, I mean plenty. And I'm looking at them now. There are plenty of stepdads out there who um, want to share publicly what they're going through. And then there are other stepdads who are willing to share some great information. Some of it's crap. What I mean by crap, I mean some of these people just... Some, some of these, these comments on questions that are real, like stepdads that are going through real shit. And some of these comments are just unproductive, right? They're not going to, they, they'll, they'll literally lead to a complete downfall, but yet they feel like it's okay to comment on a stepdad who's going publicly saying, Hey, I need help. Meaning, well, first and foremost, if you're going on social media publicly and asking for help or doing things like, I think I said this last episode where I say you start off with, you know, pardon the rant or whatever the shit that is. Uh, I'm telling you, you, you're, you are, you are going at your whole situation the wrong way, the wrong way, because you are asking for help on platforms from men who are going to give you like 19 different perspectives and the way they see your situation. And in the end, nobody knows first really what you're going through because they're not in your shoes. And two, and this is the sucky part, the whole do as I say, not as I do thing. Uh, I think, I mean, I don't know the actual statistics, but the majority of people who go on social media and platforms and ask for help are will never actually do anything with it. But the engagement that they have in the post fills their look at me tank, right? Um, but again, I'm not saying that's for everybody. A lot of you, but not for everybody. Um, so do as I say, not as I do. Okay, I keep going back and forth. But do as I say, not as I do. Meaning there are, there are plenty of you men who are stepdads in your home who get frustrated and upset and angry because the children don't listen to you or your partner doesn't have your back or the others and the others are you know who they are 
can't stop talking about you behind your back, right? And you're fed up with it. You can't stand it. I mean, you're asking your kids, I mean, do this, be that, listen here, check my authority there. You're looking at your, you know, your partner, you're like, I'm the leader, you gotta trust me, all this stuff. But when it comes down to the meat and potatoes of a relationship, um, there obviously is a disconnect between the things you're saying and the things that you're actually doing, right? So what I mean by this is I can never tell my kids to, you got to read more books because books are going to be the thing that, you know, that you stand on to find success in this world. If I was somebody that never read books, I mean, how can I tell my kids to do something that I'm, I'm not willing to do? How can I tell you stepdads to do something or to try something that I first wasn't willing to do? So I'm referring to this as like some of this advice that goes on here. I've, I've, and again, this is just something I like to do because I'm trying to educate myself. I've reverse engineered some of these comments to the users, to the person, and I find that that person will give this, this advice on a platform to a stepdad who's looking for help. And then when you track back to what their journey is, they're doing the exact opposite or they are complaining on their platform in a way that doesn't match the comment that they gave. Does that make sense? So do as I say, not as I do. You can't ask others, nor can you expect others to listen to you, respect you, understand you, to have your back. If you are unwilling to do the hard work first, um, we are raising children in a world that is completely different from the world that we were raised in. Phones and internet and video games and social media and cyberbullying and all that stuff is something we didn't experience. We didn't, we didn't have to go through. Um, so it's kind of hard for us to give advice about that, right? Because how can we compare somebody that's being cyberbullied to somebody that's actually bullied? It's two different stories. One, you can actually face your, your fears and the other, you are dealing with anonymous people who are leaving dumb shit, which can then bring down your self-esteem. So I'm saying this, guys, because I want you to understand that if you're here, if you're watching, if you're listening, if you're learning, if you're wanting to be better, you have to make peace with the work. You have to make peace with doing the work and, and putting in the amount of energy and effort without expectations in order to see real results. It's a hard, it's a hard pill to swallow because we want things now, but it's not the way it works. I was sharing with a stepdad, Ron, the other day. He was... Um, he was talking about how he feels that that not only like he was asked to kind of separate himself from his stepdaughter and he goes you know i feel like like all the work i put in up to now is just like a waste like it's not going to be of any you you know it's not going to mean anything so then i shared with him a letter that my daughter wrote me this year for father's day she's 19. i came into her life when she was nine and this letter was incredible Right? I mean, this is one of those letters that every stepdad wants to get from their child. And it took me 10 years to get it. And that's, some, that's coming from somebody that really is putting in the work and is doing the grind and is doing what I say. Um, and it still takes time. You never know when it's going to release. You never know when you are going to get that recognition. And you can't expect it right now. You can't expect it in the, in the trenches. That's where we are. We're in a, a lot of you are just in the trenches. You're fighting every day, battling every day to gain respect, authority. You're trying to win the love and admiration. And you're also trying to balance your life and your friends and your partner and not lose communication with your, with your partner so that the love goes away. I mean, there's so many different balls that are in the air um, that if you also add no patience onto it, you're going to drive yourself crazy where you'll leave. You will leave. So remember when you think about the whole do what I say, not as I do thing. Ask yourself when you're telling your, your kids to do something, ask yourself if you had to apply that to your life in your, in your way, right? And you're doing like, why aren't you doing the chores? Are you, why aren't you taking care of your responsibilities? Are you getting upset with them because they're not doing what you tell them to do? And then I want you to take a look at your life and ask yourself, are you doing everything you're supposed to be doing? Are you following through with everything you said you were going to do? Or are you making excuses and then justifying it because you're the adult? It's not like that. It's not the way it works. You can't, you can't tell them to do something that, and, and 
apply something and to become something that you were unwilling to do yourself. And some of you need to take a hard look in the mirror because stepdads, changing the narrative and changing the way the society views us is not going to be an easy climb. And we are going against a ton of obstacles. But it is absolutely and positively important that we all come together to change the way we are looked at. Because guys, remember, we stepped into a position, we stepped into a, a family and into a situation where most men would run. I mean, you may not know this, but that is a superpower. I've said this a hundred times, it's a superpower. You're literally taking on the responsibility of somebody else's kids with no guarantee of success. It's, I mean, think about that. Think about if I would have presented that to you as a job when you were like 19 coming out of high school or coming out of college, if you went to college. But imagine if I would have said, okay, I'm gonna give, this is your job. You're gonna put in 10, maybe 15, 20 years of work. Chances are you're gonna get like recognition maybe once or twice. But when it comes, it's gonna come in big forms. But, you, but I can't tell you when it's gonna come. And you have to stay completely patient. Oh, no, oh by the way, the whole world's gonna to try to knock you down. Would you take the job? Hell no, nobody would. Most men, if I told them at the age of 30 that the same job was available, they would run. So why did you step into this position? There's gotta be a reason, right? So if you are one of those men that are not doing the work behind closed doors, the work that you need to do, don't expect your, your children to listen. Don't expect your children to all of a sudden uh, start doing the right thing if you're not doing the right thing. Man up a little bit about that. Okay, so I want to go to questions real quick. Two questions and then this podcast is done or this episode is done. So... So am I the only one that feels like the whole house tells me I do everything wrong, but never see the good I, that I'm doing? This is a person who's got, who is not confident in his position as a stepdad. He's not confident in his position as a man, period. Mainly because he needs to feel that sense of, he needs that recognition to feel, you know, like to make him feel like he's doing the right thing. Let me be the first to tell you, stepdad, you are, man. You're doing the right thing. You are doing a brave, noble thing stepping in. You don't need to be told that by anybody else in the house as long as you're doing what you're doing. If you started doing the self-work, if you started working on you, you can, you'll quickly, not quickly, but you'll figure out and you'll start to learn why you feel that you need to be told great job. Why do you need the pat on the ass? Why can't self-recognition come into play? Why? If you need that sort of recognition, or if you need to feel like you're, you're being valued, why not work on your communication with your partner? Why not? She should be validating you at every chance that she can get. And if you're not getting that validation from your partner, it's because your communication is not there. You haven't worked on the us part of your relationship. If you feel like you need to go on social media and post, you know, why can't anybody see the good I'm doing? I mean, really think about that. Really think about, what if you saw your kid post that? You would go to them and go, hey, what do you, what do you need people to tell you how good you're doing? You just keep doing the work. Just keep doing what you're doing. I tell that to my son all the time. He's 10. He's a basketball player. And he doesn't feel like sometimes he gets the recognition that he deserves for being, having the talent that he has at 10 years old. And I try to tell him, hey, man, nobody cares. Nobody. Everybody is so focused on their own life. They don't have enough time to focus on you. And nobody's going to take full, 100%, all in, close, pay close attention to you on your talent as a basketball player until it's time. And in the meantime, you have to give yourself, the, you have to put self-validation into play and you have to keep doing the work so that when you go to bed every night, you can feel accomplished. So stepdad, you don't need, it doesn't matter what you're, you, they're, of course they're seeing everything that you're doing wrong and nothing that you're doing right because all you're doing, you're, you're literally posting about it and focusing on it. I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure that it's probably bigger than it seems. You're making a mountain out of a molehill. Um, 
and you need it you, you don't need the validation man you don't just continue to keep trucking forward you are standing still when you do that you, you feel like you can't move forward within your home and as a leader and as a man until somebody gives you validation that you're doing a good job up till now, like some sort of a, like a, what do they call that in jobs where they do a um, evaluation, a monthly or quarterly evaluation? Like, do you feel like you need that? Like to sit the kids down and say, okay, everybody, tell me how I'm doing. I need to know what to work on. Okay, who sees the good stuff? Who sees the bad stuff? Bullshit, man. You don't need that. You don't if you're doing the, the work on you. You don't need that if your spouse and your partner is validating you. And then the validation from the kids will come in due time when it's supposed to, period. 10 years, one letter. That's how long it took. And it was worth every word, every word. So I hope that helps, man. Okay, next, um, next thing I want to talk about is... Uh, is a stepdad who posted about um, anyone else's partner ever said anything like, I don't need you. I've done it on my own before and I can do it again. You ever had that argument with your partner? You know, for maybe one year, one, two, maybe even three or four, where you do something wrong. And, and again, please remember dads, it's, it's okay to make mistakes. All, all bio dads make mistakes all the time. As a stepdad, it's okay to make mistakes. If your partnership is sound and your teamwork is strong with your, with your, with your partner, if you've put in the self work and you're, and you have that validation and you, and you are building that confidence and uh, as a leader, um, you, you're not going to get into a position where your partner is going to look at you and say, I've done it before myself. I could do it again. Because when they say that, when they, when they say like, when I, I'm assuming that it was an argument that this gentleman got into and his partner yelled that out to him. I've done it before on my own. I could do it again. Um, that is first a cry for like attention on the, on the mom, on the mom's part. It's kind of like, uh, I'm strong enough. I don't need you. Okay. I don't need you to tell me how to be a mom. I'm protective. I know what I'm doing. I didn't walk out on my kids. The bio dad did. You know, it's this, it's this, this force field that she has around her where she doesn't want to let anybody in. So when she says things like that, what she's really saying is, is like, you know, our communication is broken down. I don't think we're validating each other. We don't, we don't, we're not building each other up to where we feel confident enough as parents and as partners. And, um, when she gets backed against the wall, her natural reaction and an instinct is going to be to tell you that she doesn't need you. When in reality, she does. She definitely needs you because you're there for a reason. I wouldn't take it personal. I'd be, I'd be upset about it, but I'd be more upset about the fact that she says that and you can't go look at her and go, honey, what do you mean by that? You've done it before by yourself. You can do it. I know you can. You're strong enough. You could do anything you can by yourself. But I think we're better as a team. If you can, if you were aware enough to say that in the moment she said what she said, that argument would have disappeared. It would have brought you closer. It would have gave her validation. It would have made you feel good as a man and as a leader. But she's wanting to know that you know that she's strong enough. So validate her. Validate her. Validate her that she's strong. Validate her that you're not there to somehow be a crutch. You're there to be with her, her partner in this whole journey. I'm telling you, validate her. It'll work. And that's what you say about it. You, you literally turn it right back on her. I know you're strong enough, honey. You're absolutely strong enough. You're probably the strongest woman I know. When Bill walked out, you took over. You did the work. Kids were fed, roof over their house. I'm coming in to give you support. I'm coming in to take 50% of the work off your shoulders. I'm coming in to let you know that I'm here to protect you. I've got this. I'm not going anywhere. That's what she needs. And if she says things like she said to this gentleman right here, it's because she sees doubt in the relationship. She sees doubt in her own self. And that's, that's much bigger than, than just 
the statement that this gentleman's making. He goes much deeper than that. And if the stepdad is not aware of it, and then he isn't doing the self-work, and he's not able to communicate it properly with his partner because he doesn't know her actual love language, then it will never really get anywhere. No real effect will happen. It'll probably be a fight. Some fights last weeks, months, hours, days. And then you kind of try to push it under the rug and keep moving forward. Or you'll say a quick, I'm sorry, and then move on. But you have to communicate with one another. Dude, validator. That's what I would. I'm going to actually answer this gentleman. Validator. So, anyway. Guys, this is episode 27. I think at episode 30, maybe 40, I'm going to stop at season one and I'm going to move on to a new segment. I'm not exactly sure how or I'm going to do it, but I don't care about the how. The why is more important to me. I love this platform. I love talking about this. I'm going to be opening up comments and questions for moms because one of the biggest things moms struggle with guys is that they can't read us or they don't know what we're going through or they can't understand and all these things that we have that are going on in our head because we're the outsider we're walking on eggshells we're being ridiculed and judged and mocked and all these things that we go through as stepdads and there's not a lot of men talking about this there's not a lot of men sharing with moms going Okay, what's your question? What's going on with you in your relationship? What your, what's the stepdad doing? Okay, quick. Well, in my situation, when this happened to me, this is how we handled it. And give her like some ammunition so that the relationship can continue to grow instead of just fizzling out. You know, because once it fizzes out and a stepdad is taken away and or takes himself out of the picture, that's when the negative Nancy's and everybody show up say, I told you so. And he was never right for you. And thank God he's out of the picture. All these things that all the freaking morons in your life that are, that are not happy. So they want to make sure that you're not happy. They're going to say that to you about this man. If, and when he does walk away. And then that's what gives men like me bad reps, at, um, as a stepdad, because you know, we, we have this, this stigma around us like in, in these different adjective words that are used to describe us that are just not true. And that goes the same for stepmoms, by the way. Stepmoms are going through the exact same thing we're going through. <clears throat> just stepmoms are a lot more willing to talk about it. So I'm going to definitely answer this guy today. So guys, thank you again. Episode 27, the Professional Stepdad Podcast. Make sure to like, share. Um, help me build this platform so then I can help out as many, not only as many stepdads that are here now, that really can win, but the stepdads that are gonna come after us, that we that are not even <clears throat> in our situation yet, but that could use our information and our stories to help overcome obstacles that they're gonna face. Because we're, we're not, everything that we're going through right now, stepdads went through before us. We're not reinventing the wheel. You know, when stepdads in the 60s and 70s were going through this, it was the television, watching too much TV and, and the late night shows for us it's social media and, and for the next generation it's going to probably be something along the lines of vr or something i don't know so open up the lines of communication gentlemen have an amazing wonderful day Thank you, everybody.